Okay, it's 7 o'clock at the Tabaldi of September 14th, 2022. <clears throat> on the board of the board, my name is Ed Stevens, the chairman. Next to me is Tom Manning, the secretary. Uh, next to him is Doug Smith, who's the all time city minister for Kravitz tonight. And to my right is Mr. Bill Mentor, who will be sitting for uh, Scott Osato. We have all of this present, which will be for the record. Uh, the man will be checked by the secretary at the time. Once he's certified by the member of the proceed. Anybody can speak. Uh, you do speak, please state your name and address. And tell us what this is what they propose. Um, we'll the close the public hearing. It's good for the thing. Discuss the case uh, to put the main proposition in the same place. Uh, as a cell phone, there's a one view, no silent at all. Uh, if the president had a yet, I think the president, one of our former members, also president, Mr. San Marini, Tom San Marini, and uh, Tony Cousins. Uh, we have one of our former members, Mr. Christian Fitzgerald, who would like to make a statement. Be easier for me up here. Up here. Sorry, man. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. I just want to come in. But I have been a member of the ZBA for, for 35 years. I consider it a great experience, and I want to thank each and every member of this board for have, making it a great experience. The ZBA has had a constant membership of basically the same personnel over that same period of time. I consider each member a friend and a dedicated citizen of Groton doing a good civic duty. This is basically a farewell talk. I had to resign from the ZBA this, this spring because I moved from Groton to Pawkatuck, Connecticut, which is out of town. Each of you have my respect for the years of dedication, friendship, and service to the citizens of Broughton. Thank you very much for, and continue the very good work you do. I will miss the people and the meetings a lot. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sir. So stay on for him, it's not for us. Let me take the five minutes for you. Sure. See what happens. Give me five minutes. It's already five minutes. Five minutes. Better work. Better notes. At least for sure. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are. I know that we're going to go recess. I'm not certain if I can stop it. Even if we're in recess, I'm not certain that I should stop the recording. Okay, well, just for the record, at uh, 7 o'clock, Mr. Chairman uh, has arrived and he will be sitting in the, uh, the vacancy position. So we have a cast of five. Oh, we're waiting. That's what we'll move ahead in the agenda. Sure. Well, um, we have minutes. I have to go back in session, right? Yeah. We're, we're back. To we're back. Yeah, we're recording. Uh, minutes. One thing. Because we're all in the uh, make a motion to present up to the approval. Minutes is presented. Second. 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 Yeah. All in favor? I don't know. All those. 
Yeah, it's fine. I abstain. I wasn't, I wasn't there, so I abstain. Four, four, six, one, 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 six, Orange frame two is attached. So we can't make a motion for job done. I'll make a motion to block the minutes. That's no, it's just what well, they schedule. Oh, sorry. schedule. Sorry. Yeah, I'll move to I'll move to adopt the schedule as proposed. Okay. Second. Second. So that's <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries by the night. Staff report? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have to end this already. Keep in a slide. I propose that we give them another two minutes and we just show them to achieve this. Question at the time. Yeah. Assuming that he, that he doesn't show in two minutes, we've opened the public hearing at this point. So the time the times are running as far as for the public hearing ends. Yeah. So the 35 day time frame started for that. Okay. Um, okay. There were three people waiting. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Hello. Yes. How's it going? Hello. I'm here for the uh, variance hey, for go. 894 Route 12. Am I in the right place? Yeah, your vol the volume's down on the lot. Is anybody else? Is it yes, I'm Attorney Cushman. I'm here also. Oh, yeah. Can you guys hear that? Not really. Not really. Okay, so they, these are the others. They are here. I, I can't tell if I'm being heard or not. Can someone yeah, acknowledge you? Are. Thank you. We're just we're having trouble hearing you. The volume is, is down really low, and I can't see. So I can't. That's it. Speaking of low, like, you have much more experience than I do. So, uh, down by the date uh, time. Try now, Jane. Can we hear you? Is that correct? Though? I Maybe. can hear you. Yes. We're having a little trouble hearing. Maybe if you speak loud, then it'll be okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, our volume's up to 100 now. Oh, that's much better, actually. Okay. Okay. Right. Video. So, you might have a video. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good day. Yes. He's speaking for you. Police, the attorney. Okay, the call of the meeting is CBA 22 03, 894 Route 12, Jared Reinhardt, applicant, Dominic Sarabio, Molo, owner for a certificate of approval location for section 9.6 1C. 
in use variance from section 3.3-1B to allow an auto repair business in a CN zoning district. And number 1780.8424065 CN zone. And for the record, um, I found mailings to be in order and just a, a document that there were essentially eight addresses in which required to be uh, sent information. One of them was the owner of the property, Sarah Rowland. And what confuses a lot is all of the different locations that are owned by many of the butters. It essentially becomes laborious because there's a number of different addresses associated with, say, as an example, Pleasant Valley Apartments, LLC, Mars, Pennsylvania. So they, it looks tough to distinguish what is going on. I just want to document for the record that in addition to the eight addresses, there were many numerous locations addresses that didn't require ownership housing, maybe housing, an explanation. What we usually find to be the case. They were in order. So what says to proceed? Uh, I see the chairing for question. Are you representing the uh, application? Yes, I am. Would you like me to make a statement now? Yes, please. All right. <clears throat> The, the purpose of the ZBA is to allow elasticity in the regulations. In other words, the purpose is so that you don't have hard and fast rules. That, so there's no uh, uh, ambiguity or confiscatory uh, uh, issues with the regulations. Um, you usually have to... Um, have, prove a, a, a hardship to get a variance, but there's an exception to that rule. It's called the Odalson rule, in which case that's ba based on a Connecticut, Gen Connecticut Supreme Court case. In that case, if you are asking for uh, a variance in which the nonconformity is less egregious than the prior nonconformity, then you do not have to show a hardship. In this case, the prior use of this property was a hotel in which there was a lot of transient traffic. Um, there, were, there was nighttime use, light, night, light time, nighttime traffic. Um, almost everyone coming and going was transient. It was not conducive to a neighborhood, far different from what uh, this nonconformity use will be like. This nonconformity is going to be a, um, running a tow service, which has been in the town for 60 years. It's been a family business for 60 years. Now, they have been kicked out of their existing location. They have to move. This, this uh, neighborhood this, that they're going in is ideal for this. Um, all around them are dealers, automobile dealers. Um, so th their use is going to be entirely local traffic, very little local traffic, none at night. It will be entirely less egregious than the motel use. Um, and it will be completely in conformance with what the existing neighborhood is with the, there are dealerships on both sides of this location. Uh, 
And this business does business with the town. It, it, it does the towing for the police department. This is not the sort of business you want to have to lose in the town. You want to keep it in the town. Um, it, it is considerably less egregious than the prior use. So in my opinion, the Adolfo rule should apply in this case, that we do not have to prove a hardship. We simply have to prove that the use is less egregious than the prior use, which it clearly is going to be. All the work is gonna be done inside, nothing will be done outside. There'll be very little traffic. There'll be no traffic at, at night. Um, there'll be no transient traffic. Um, so, and it will be doing the town's work. So uh, this is something that can be approved by the, um, the board um, without a hardship. Uh, you just have to, uh, you just have to establish or just have to find that the use is less egregious than the prior use. In other words, it's a step down in the, uh, the use that the prior use was. And it is completely consistent with the neighborhood. And it's consistent with the, the, the transition type uh, zone that you now have. Uh, remember that just a couple of years ago, this was uh, a, um, a, a different zone. The zone got changed because they, this is supposed to be a, a zone that uh, transitions from commercial to neighborhood. And this is an ideal use for this because it's going to be quiet. It's going to be inside. It's going to be in a location that, that is going to be convenient for the, the town, the, the, uh, the police department that uses this service. So uh, that's our position. I don't think we need a hardship. I think it's, a, it's proper for this uh, business to go in this location. It does not hurt the neighborhood at all. Uh, so that's basically our position. Okay. Uh, all of them are questions. Stuff. I got a couple of questions. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, first question I have is: It's an empty lot right now. If I'm, if I'm, my observation is correct. So when was this prior use uh, of, as a hotel? When did that happen? Um, that was the last use of the property. Um, it was torn down years ago and there hasn't been anything there since. And, um, it's the perfect place for me to, to build a, a building for a garage and, and continue running a business to, to help the town with the police department toes and local community do a lot of work with the sub base and the sub sailors. And it'd be close, closer to that also. Uh, is this, is this Mr. Ryan has speaking? Yes, sir. Would you just identify yourself for the record name and address, please? Jared Reinhardt, 44 Bridge Street, Rotten, Connecticut, 06340. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, from my perspective, I'm looking at an empty lot that's in a CN zone. There's no Try use on it now that you're trying to change into a lesser one. You just, to me, it looks to me like you want a variance from the CN requirements. Is that right? Uh, we, we're looking, yeah, for the variance to be able to run the business there, which requires the license. And that's, I think, where the zoning makes a problem because of the zoning not is not for a dealer license and the license is required to do towing. So what, what is the nature of the business? Is it just towing? Is it towing and repair? Is it tow, towing? Tow, yeah, towing and repair. But it's light repair. Yeah, light repair and towing. Is it, and it's not a, uh, a an automobile dealership where you're gonna be selling used cars, right? I don't sell cars, but we would have the license to sell cars. That license covers everything. You have to have the license to be in business, to do repairs, and you have to have the license to have a record registration. Without it, you can't get that, the registration. 
But we haven't sold cars in years, literally years. And I don't really plan on selling cars. It's not my thing. It's a small business, but the dealer license is required to be in business. You have to be licensed through motor vehicle. Oh, I, no, I understand that. So, and I think you could give, excuse me, I think you could give the variance with a caveat that he will not sell cars there. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine too. I, I don't I don't have any really desire to sell cars. That's that's not my thing. But I do need to have the license to be in business. Okay. This question is from Mr. Cushman here. Um you can't talk in your about letter you you talk about section nine seven uh 3D, uh, change of one non-conforming use to another. Is that what you're trying to do here? Yes, and, and that is consistent with the Adolfoson rule. That, that basically says the same thing that that rule says, that you can, but your rule is even more permissive because you say it can just be a level uh, change, one to the other that about the same grievance. But in our case, we're saying we're stepping down. And by the way, even though that's a vacant lot, the owner could make a claim that he is a non-conforming use and could put a motel back on that property. Well, well. I know that there's some issues there, but that it could be the claim. And, and a non-conformity is a right. So uh, he could make the argument. I know that that may end up being something that have to be cited in court, but he could make that argument. Okay. Then they have a question about 9-73B then. Because that seems to say that um, to convert the non-conforming use, you have to go to the commission. And the commission in that paragraph is the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission and not the Zoning Board of Appeals. So have you gone to the Planning and Zoning Commission and asked for permission? No, I don't believe we have, and I think that they can't. They cannot grant a variance. Only the the ZBA can. This is, I'm not talking about a variance. I'm talking about a change of a non-conforming use, which is what you you said you were asking for. Well, we're actually before you asking for a variance. Well, then you when your letter talks about changing the non-conforming use, so I'm a little confused. I, I, what, what I was getting at there is that this is not an egregious change that we're, that we're looking to do. It's a very simple change consistent with what the regulations say. In other words, it's consistent with your own regulations, what we're asking to do. I understand that what you're asking for, but if you were asking for a non change from one non conforming use to the other, then it seems to me before it comes to this board, you have to go to the Planning and Zoning Commission and have them decide one way or the other. You're talking about a zone change. We're not asking for a zone no, change. I'm not talking about a zone change. I'm talking about 9 7 3B. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I don't have, seem to have that section in front of me now. I'm sorry. All right. Well, I'll read it to you here. So okay. Non-conforming use of land may be changed to another non-conforming use of land with the approval of a special permit and the determination by the commission, which means the Planning and Zoning Commission, that yes. the proposed use is equally or more appropriate in the district than the existing non-conforming use and will not have a greater impact on the surrounding area. In permitting such change, the commission may require appropriate conditions to protect the public and the environment in accordance with these regulations. Yes, and that's talking about a special permit, not a variance. You just said you're asking for a change of non-conforming use, and that's the- Yes, but we're not- That applies, you also cited it in your letter. Yes, we're, we're asking for a variance from the, zo the zoning regulation. I think uh, if I can step in, Tom Zanarini staff. Um, 
what the what the board is getting at is whether you or not you're in the right place based on what you're requesting. Just as an example of procedure, one of the more recent uh, similar examples uh, that went through this section that uh, Mr. Smith quoted was the um, uh, 15 Elm Street, which is now known as the Spicer Mansion. It was a non-conforming use as a eight uh, room apartment building. Uh, and then a buyer came in and wanted to change it to a hotel, both of which were non-conforming uses. Uh, the commission by special permit determined that an apartment of eight units and a hotel of eight units would be similar or less impact. And so they granted the change by special permit that never came to the zoning board of appeals. And that's a very similar case. As this. Yes. With, with all due respect, uh, I was not involved with my clients when they came to you to discuss how this could be done. Right. They set up this through you, this procedure for a variance rather than a special permit. Frankly, I think I probably would prefer being rather, I'd rather prefer being looking for a special permit, but we're here because this is what got set up. Rush, you, you came in quite a bit after the fact, so the process was already. Yeah, that's, that's exactly my point. Can I continue? So my point though is that your letter specifically cites section 9-7-3B and I'm, if we're, if we're working under that one, it seems like you're in the wrong four. Not six. Yeah, yeah. But my, my point there was that this is not the type thing we're asking for is something the town can and does approve of. It's not something we're asking for something outrageous that can't be done. Look, this is a very simple process, a very simple request. He needs a, he needs a license to, to do his towing service here. So he needs to get a variance to allow him to do it. Now, maybe a special permit would have been in the better procedure. I don't know, but but uh, the, the, the purpose, the use he wants to put of this is perfectly consistent with what the town allows. And maybe the process or the procedure isn't the correct one here, but it's it's something that can easily be done. We don't need a hardship to do it. I can't imagine why the town would want this business to leave town. It just is beyond my comprehension. It's been in town 60 years. Well, I think Doug raises a point. Why? Let me back up a second. I had no clue where this was, and I did a site check just because I thought it was on the opposite side of the road. But anyway, the one of the shoulders clearly uh, there is a lot of commercial location. One of the questions I had was I was trying once I got a handle on where the property was located. Um, I'm going to ask this question the size of the building versus the lot. It looks like the lot slightly over half acre. And how much of that square footage of the lot? And this is something you can answer later. Uh, but I, I'd like to know what the size of the building is that's going to be installed. Or is it going to meet all the setback requirements? So, uh, um, but, uh, you should have a sketch of our, our engineer drawing. Uh, wasn't that part of the submission? My understanding, my understanding, it meets all the, the setbacks and sidelines and parking regulations and so forth. Well, there's no dimensions on it, I guess. So I don't see anything that says that it does comply. But anyway, that's that's something that I can explain. But going back to what Doug has said, yeah. I'll just put this up. If we proceeded with the request 
subject to compliance with that 9.73b that they go back to getting. Is that something that will get the approval for the zone change? Well, for not, as, not as zone change. Not as zone change. Yeah. Uh, form of use. It seems like you're at a, a stumbling point to whether or not you're even capable of making a decision. Mm -hmm. All right, is the board in agreement with that? Do you know, do you think you can or cannot make a decision on it? Well, I'm not talking as far up. I, I've been having questions. He's correct. This is not before. I'm, I'm just reading the, <coughs> the, the reg. In the future, yes. Yeah. But based on the regs, he should report the PNC. Uh, Does the board feel like you might need legal counsel to make a decision one way or the other? I think it would be wise. Somebody. It, it seems to me that it's a perfectly reasonable request, but I think we're in the wrong place. That's all. <laughs> the procedure, this is an appeals board, and there hasn't been any reason to appeal anything at this point in time. It just needs to go to another place, perhaps. Let's take this in unit apartment building, hold those three, but not vacant. Now let's come in and put a hotel there. So maybe the way this written, um, another, another way this could have been written is to say, uh, I, I want to put a, um, I want a variance to put an auto repair facility in a CN zone. I'm sorry, it's a CR. Yeah. CN. CN, okay. Yeah. And and if that was what was on the table, the board might be able to take action on that. I, I think it's a point of since you're here, that might be a good way to look at it. It's, if it's a vacant lot, and if you're willing to get a variance. The, the, the owner made definitive took definitive action to change the use of the property. It's no, no longer. Actually, no, that's not correct. Um, okay. The, the owner was uh, to go through there. I have the land use record here and um, uh, the previous owner let's see, I can go through, it was not uh, the current one. Uh, the hotel burned down, uh, had a major fire in 1990. It was demolished in 1991. Uh, Mr. Cerebolo bought the property after demolition or after the destruction had already been done. Uh, and it, there was no, according to the record here, there's been uh, no action taken by the owner to change the use. So in that case, what Mr. Cushman said is correct. If the non-conforming use is protected, and if you wanted to go in and put up a hotel, you, you could do that. Right. So he could probably yeah. put the same hotel that was there previous. So now we have a change of use. But that's so to Mr. Smith's point. But it is vacant. If you look at it as a vacant time. Trying to move forward. Trying to move forward in that sense, yeah. Could you simply say it's a non conforming use? Yeah, we have our job, P and Z have said, and once, probably 30 years ago, this board, when I was not here, ran in fairness on subdividing a piece of property in Galesville Road, but soon you can see. I'm very reticent on stepping on the PNC's uh, so give me more specifics. Okay, so come on. It seems pretty clear. So that the PNC, they say, then they come to us. They say, yeah, you can't go. You know, that's the matter. Well, if the PNC said they would have to go to the Superior Court, as a matter of procedure. But at any rate, it sounds like the block would be able to go to the Superior Court. To appeal a decision of the planning zoning commission goes to the Superior Court. Decision not going? On anything. If somebody appeals to the zoning commission, they could. 
If someone appeals to the city, it's only official. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard. Got it. So, it, I think it sounds like you might want a legal opinion. Uh, well, I, I think that's a wise for us. Sounds well, very good. We should continue this stuff. And that you want to and then withdraw because we're already here. It takes two weeks. So wasting the money because he's going to have to get a dealer to repair his license to going to work anyway. So if you're able to do so. Then that piggy back on without needing another meeting, another hour. It's wise to keep this thing clean so that we know all the same supplies. And those regulations are fairly new to make sure that it's speaking clean. I need to listen. Can we just talk to Mr. Cushman? Yeah. Um, Mr. Cushman, uh, the other thing that troubles me here is if I read 9 to 6 1 2. Two, talking about our review of the application for a certificate of approval. It seems to say that we're not acting as a ZBA, but we're acting on behalf of the state of Connecticut for approving these types of businesses. And we shouldn't issue a certificate until the application has been approved in the location that it's found suitable. We can't act on that until the location is approved, which would have to take place, I believe, in the future, either through as a result of you coming in with more information or are you going to the um, Planning and Zoning Commission and getting their approval under 9-73B. So that's that's the way I am doing this. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what's happened with the Department of Motor Vehicles. Jared would have to answer where he's been on that. Yeah, that's, Jared. That, uh, well, his reading was correct. We'd have to the, the variance or approval would have to be granted for the location for the location approval license to work. So right now, Mr. Cushman and Jared. Uh, the board's asking for a motion to continue to get a legal opinion from town attorney, and we would That's, continue. We would continue. Sure. I'm, so, I'm sorry to continue to when? Uh, September 28th, two weeks. Okay. I, I have no objection to that, Jared. Do you have any objection? No, I don't have any objections. I mean, I, I want you guys to make a good decision, and uh, whatever time you need to figure it out is is good. Um, I just hope that we're on the right path. So what we need to do here to accomplish this. Yeah. Directed into this path. Okay. I move that we continue this hearing until the start of May. Oh, okay. Second. Aye. Aye. Carrick. Thank you. Continue on the twenty-eighth. I couldn't hear. The motion was. The motion was to continue the hearing until September when? 28th. 28th. Two weeks from now. That's our next regular meeting. Right. Okay. I, I, I'd like to be in touch with you to make sure that uh, we're following the proper procedure, too, so we have no disagreement on the procedure or with yeah. town council, whichever you prefer. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah, sure. We can talk tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay.